It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. And it's all up next. With Chesapeake Bank gleaming in the distance, we are inside M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the Baltimore Ravens. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Jason Sanders now to get this one started and off we go from M&T Bank Stadium and they'll start this drive just across the 30 pretty nice work on the return the Ravens offense going to work and as usual it's Lamar Jackson the former MVP of the league at the helm and he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks his goal each and every season continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded all those highlight reel plays you see they come off the fact that he can run it throw it and scares defenses every time he takes a snap Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive to about the 35, second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 35, here's second and six. Jackson options out left and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up and not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. They go play action with Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. A call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure, and he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Going to the air, Tugavailoa. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? 
They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. That is caught, and he is going to have the Dolphins first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. It shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Justin Matabike working his way to the quarterback that time. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. On second down, Jackson. It got his man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A gain there of 30 big ones. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. First carry now for Justice Hill. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. A credit to tackle to Brandon Jones. When you try to create space for your running back, the first thought is how physical is the offensive line? Sometimes it's just positioning. On that play, it didn't matter about positioning or being physical. The defensive front, they out leveraged them and won the battle. On second down, it's Edwards. And some room to work. Down to the 10. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. 42 yards for Gus Edwards. And the Ravens get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone. I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground. And he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens. 
Ravens lead at 7-0. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run. touchdown Braxton Berrios selected to bring it out and the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20 so Miami coming out for their second drive the last series for him a little disappointing forced to punt and now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive first and ten They fake the handoff. Now Tua. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Tua. well upfield across the 45 27 yards there a first down it's a game of matchups and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch especially your best guys and when they work out of the slot you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go you can break out or you can break in that makes it hard to defend On first and ten, it's Mostert. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. This is second and eight. From midfield, here's Tua. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 29-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Up the middle they go with Mostert. Adafe Owe there on the tackle. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. Here's a toss play right to Moster. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run probing now early to try and get things done later. On third down, HM. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Now a throw in the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I like his awareness in the pocket there. Nowhere to go with the football. So instead of forcing it to the sideline, he's just going to put this one into the harbor and live to fight another down without getting wet. Here's second and ten. 
Looking to pass to him. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worth this all yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Throwing now is Tugabailoa. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. It could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Had to get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Sanders' kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Ravens offense getting set and ready for this next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated, they both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. They run once more with Edwards. And they'll stop him after a gain of a couple to the 33. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Now they need two. Here's third down. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. A rough go there on third down, a loss of four. Well, so much for that possession. Yeah, I think he tried to do a little too much there, partner. He tried to keep it himself. End up getting buried in the backfield, and that brings up fourth down. Now, now is a punter, Jordan Stout. the fair catch a signal for and take it so a change of possession here on the punt and it'll be dolphin football Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Second and 10. Now Tua. And he'll get this into the hands of Braxton Berrios. It's a big play there for Miami. 43 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. 
That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Two are going to throw. Out route to Hill complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. 10 yards on the pickup. In second and inches at the 23-yard line. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter. Options galore here, second and a few inches as they've got it as we resume action. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And Hill is going to have a Dolphins first down as he'll get this down inside the 20. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Tug of Ilo to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. Jalen Waddle from 19 yards away. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just you noticed right silence. there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play and they got it done there. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is now 10 to 7. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? Is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's brought down, giving this one up to about the 35. 65 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. They'll go back to Edwards on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Here's Jackson to throw. This throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. 
They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And now third down and six to go. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Third down and six. Now Jackson. And that nearly intercepted. Boy, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here's Jordan Stout now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Dolphins offense returning to the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. That confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Mostert. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes a little tread left on the tires. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Tua wants to throw it on second down. That's Waddle. He's got the catch on the out route. And Waddle going to have a Dolphins first down as he's up to the 45. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Tua now on first down. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. 23 yards on the play. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Two yards on the pickup there, and that'll make it second down. Mostert up the middle. He winds up getting only a couple there. Down to the 29. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And this offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. They set up the screen. HN has it. And he's going to be out down Inside the 20 at the 15. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well, like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. Jalen Waddle with his second touchdown here in this first half. And they are able to add on to their advantage in the second quarter and already his second touchdown reception. 
Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game, and I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. Sanders on for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was finished off by a Jalen Waddle touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And Baltimore is offense set for this next possession. They find themselves down 17-7 as they start this drive first and 10. Now it's Jackson. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Buried behind the line by Christian Wilkins. And we all know how talented this guy is. He's calling the signals for him. But even the best in the game, they can struggle against a good, cohesive zone coverage. Can't find a gap in the secondary quick enough, and he ends up taking a sack. To throw is Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. Edwards now on first and ten. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Jerome Baker crashing downhill and getting the stop. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. Here's Edwards again on second down. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Here's third and nine. Jackson now. Now he's free to midfield and brought down across the 50 to the 49-yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 49-yard line. Jackson options out left and that play goes nowhere taken down losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield two yards the loss second and 12 Boy, the pursuit there terrific from the linebacking core oh it certainly was because so many times on an option play you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip one cut and he's grasping at air but this time he locked in on him the whole way took an excellent angle and his grasp came up with the quarterback. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, 
they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. From midfield now, here's Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 31-yard line. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed and on that route. He's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. To throw again is Jackson. Now he's got it. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and goal from the one. Jackson flushed out right and he's going to go down just outside of the five right around the six yard line now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half they've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already here comes third and goal Jackson and that is caught but the back judge right there to say incomplete well so a drive that spans all that time and yet you may only come away with three points here well your defense all right they actually like these long drives they get to rest over on the sidelines for a while but when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns that's frustrating they've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes Tucker's kick is good. And they're back within a touchdown at 17 to 10. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. now following the main field goal set to kick it away and this will be a touchback Barrios deciding not to bring it out the Dolphins taking over now late in this first half and we'll see how this is played offensively they've got the lead not a whole lot of time left what do you think Charles well it's tempting to try and add to your lead but a mistake there that could change things in a big way I say go ahead take the knee get on out for the half just over 30 seconds to go in the half they've got it first and 10 Tua sets up to pass it he's got a man complete and out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45 give him 30 yards there well they've looked his way quite a bit in this first half and with good reason you can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. He delivers a big play here for this offense. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Going to the air, Tugavailoa. 
A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. Here's Tua. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate, maybe, to get that back. It's third down. When a linebacker diagnoses a screen, who wins? The quarterback getting a throw over to the back in time or the linebacker running in to knock it away? With the athleticism of modern linebackers, they win the race more often than not. Tua to throw again. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Touchdown is the difference, 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble. And it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. Escaping the pressure right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 
11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game, and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. Shifts by him. 45 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Braxton Berrios, 41 yards. And the Dolphins go up by two touchdowns. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Sanders now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in you can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially but you have to do it without pressing because pressing that'll lead you into bigger errors they'll start by running the option to the right and he is going to lose yardage here Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. From the gun, they go to Edwards, and he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. On third down, Jackson. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. So now here come the Dolphins. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. 
Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. Now a second and 10. Looking to pass to him. They complete it to Hill. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Third and three. Two are going to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Tua setting up shop to throw again. Open man downfield is Hill. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. He'll take it inside the 25. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin too. Right back to A-Chan on second down. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 13-yard line. A strong pickup of 11 keeps their drive alive. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's a handoff to Mostert running left. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the nine. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Nine-yard line, second and six. Again, they'll run it with Mostert. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have moved out in front by three touchdowns. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. 
I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game Charles if they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback it has to start right here right now yeah now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast in addition they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions they'll try to get the offense going with hill and they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down that's good for 21 yards and a first down. What did you see there on the defensive side? What allowed that good size run? Well, they were in a cover two alignment, which means your two safeties are back away from the line of scrimmage. So if you can match up your blocking at the line, at the point of attack, there's usually some room, a big gap between that second level and third, and that's what they were able to exploit. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll bring up second down. Jackson firing quickly out wide for Bateman. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. 72 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Off the option, here's Edwards. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Working his way in there that time, Melvin Ingram to make the stop. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. Now it's Jackson. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. That's a game of eight. Makes it third and six. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Here's Jackson. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 20-yard line. A third down gain of 19. But when we see the ball tipped in the air, sometimes we get a little roll change, don't we? Because when it's in the air, sometimes the defensive back becomes a receiver. And in this case, the receiver looked like a defensive back, but ended up a receiver. He caught it as a receiver. <laughs> hey, it worked out. Worked out really well for them. But I'm telling you, the defensive guys... Frustrated. Oh, frustrated. <laughs> They're going to catch it in film. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Now a second and two. And they run with Edwards off the option. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And sometimes when you run a screen pass down in the red zone, it's really tough to create a lot of room to operate. The field's pretty condensed. But that was really well designed there. And they're able to pick up a first down.
It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. On first and ten, it's Jackson. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Touchdown! Zay Flowers from ten yards out. And the Ravens have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Tucker now to add the point after. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Now we get Tyreek Hill and the rest of the Miami offense back out there. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 68 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's a second and five. From midfield, here's Tua. They'll swing this out wide. Here's HM. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards there at a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. On the handoff, this is Mostert. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball?
Tua wants to throw it on second down. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Tug of Iloa to throw. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. From the 25, here's second and four. Now Tua. Good work on the scamper by Tonga Bailoa. It's a first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. A gain of nine brings out second and one at the seven-yard line. Here's second and one now from the seven. Tua sets up to pass it. Touchdown, Dolphins! Braxton Berrios with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Dolphins have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. On target to his man, likely. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. On second down, here's Jackson. And Jackson going to have the first down as he will get to the ground to avoid the contact. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. 
Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Oh, it's a screen pass, that's complete. Breaks a tackle. Oh, a solid stiff arm and some open field. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 11 more on that one and another first down. A three score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Second down and eight. Now Jackson finds his man over the middle. It's likely that'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Jackson to Bateman there for the Baltimore first. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. They go play action now. Jackson. The quick feet by Jackson. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Jackson now. This is caught. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely from six yards away. And the Ravens are able to cut into that deficit. All right, so this one not quite over yet. Back to a two-score game, CD. Yeah, and you've still got four-plus minutes to go. So when you think about comebacks, it's happened before. Now, it hasn't happened often, but you've got to think to yourself, let's be the next great comeback story and play this one out. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. Miami's offense set and ready to go. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their 25 yard line. They'll start on the ground with Mostert and he edges forward but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. 
Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. They hand it off to Mostert. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Second down, here's Mostert again. And now off to the races, down the right side. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. That good for 19 at a first down. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second and long, but you got to figure this almost certainly another run. Once again, it's Mostert. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by two touchdowns, a little under a minute 50 remaining. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Jackson connecting with Aguilar and he works it across the 25 before being tackled at this stage this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them and if I'm the offensive play caller I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield I'm looking at some of my specials something that can fool them and give you a big play now with a sense of urgency no doubt Jackson to throw and that'll be off the mark too far out in front and it's incomplete and let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Another try, second and ten now. Now Jackson. And incomplete on the deep ball. 
That was one they needed to connect on. They're down, but not quite out. So you have to figure, with under two minutes to play, they need to hit on something in very short order. A big play looming on third down. Here's Jackson. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And this is four down territory here. They know down two scores at this late stage, 10 yard passes aren't gonna do it. So they took the shot there, but it winds up incomplete. All right, they're gonna try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go, it's Jackson on fourth down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Well, this game's not done just yet. A big conversion there on fourth down and a big gainer as well. They're going to have to play perfect football from here and get all the breaks, but at least they're giving themselves a shot. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw is on target to Likely. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. This is first and 10. Throwing Jackson. And he'll just get rid of it. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. 12 yards between them in the end zone. Second and 10. Jackson. And he wisely will throw that one away. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Here now, third down. Again, Jackson. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. One last shot for Jackson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Down to an ego's Tua, and that should just about do it. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory.